If there is a hell, it's got nothing on this place. They turn part of the city into a prison for the criminally insane. One man sees it for what it truly is, a twisted playground where evil villains run free. The hero this place needs is a martial arts master with the most advanced arsenal of weaponry and gadgets money can buy. This is not a time for negotiation. After taking on a monster-sized Joker in Batman Arkham Asylum, the Dark Knight returns for an even bigger adventure. This time inside a vast prison complex known as Arkham City. To get the scoop on this new threat to the peace-loving citizens of Gotham, we piled into our Batmobile and met up with Batman Arkham City director Sefton Hill. So since the events of Arkham Asylum, um, Quincy Sharp, who was the warden at Arkham Asylum, has actually run for office. He was running for office in the first game, you might remember, and he's become the mayor of uh, Gotham City. So the first thing he's decided to do is basically he's de declared Arkham Asylum isn't fit for purpose. In order to house all, all of the criminal elements that's within Gotham, he's decided to section off a district of Gotham, kind of build a big wall around it, and basically put all of the criminal element in there. This place is dangerous. I like it. All of Gotham supervillains confined within a heavily guarded area of the city? Uh, sounds to me like a recipe for disaster. And they kind of expect chaos to explode in there when you put in Two-Face, Joker, Riddler, Penguin. They're expecting this place to kind of go to ruin. And what actually happens is this new kind of order forms. So all of the people who get chucked in, they align to particular supervillains. And you end up with a kind of order inside. Um, and this place has a natural kind of um, way, a system that starts to develop. I only take the best. And today... Best means whoever can kill you. Because it's a walled-in slice of Gotham, Arkham City includes locations that should give fans of the Batman series a little deja vu. So if you explore around within Arkham City, you're going to get to go to the old GCPD building that was in this area that was locked off. You're also going to get to go to the Monarch Theatre and Crime Alley behind the Monarch Theatre, back where it all began. So there's some really classic places to go. And as with the first game, we've really done our best to kind of imbue every kind of ounce of the game with that Batman DNA. You've become what you've always fought against, and I will stop you. You won't be sightseeing empty-handed. Arkham City takes place about a year after the events in the first game, so you have the same bat gear that you collected during your time in Arkham Asylum. So you're going to start the game with batarangs, with the bat claw, um, with the explosive gel, with the remote batarang, with the cryptographic sequencer. So you've got all of these great gadgets that you can use right from day one. And all of those gadgets we've beefed up as well. For example, the back claw can now be used to grab enemies and give them a back claw slam, uh, like a clothesline, which is a great move, double the power of a normal strike. You can also use it to fire and grab trophies from afar. Along with enhancing Batman's arsenal of weapons, Rocksteady also used Arkham City's expansive layout to change how the game's story unfolds this time out. You are in my world now, Batman. One of the main things is bringing in new side missions that you can do. So basically, you can be following the main story, and we still have that kind of focused main story for you to follow. But as a player, you can also diverge off of that story and do different and interesting things as well. And that's like track downs as, track down serial killers. There's lots of different kind of subplots that are going on at the same time. Arkham City also introduces a new mechanic for beating Gotham's rush hour traffic, gliding. We've totally evolved, well, totally revolutionized, actually, the navigation system. So now when you're gliding around, you can glide around and use your momentum to kind of fly around the city. And I think that's something that players are really going to enjoy. You know, I mean, I think that's probably what we lose most time on at work, is just gliding around, diving, flying through the city streets and back alleyways. It's just really great fun. As you soar above the streets, stay tuned into what's going on down below with the new surveillance scanner. So as Batman's gliding above the city and moving around, he can actually listen to what people are saying down on the street level. And that's really important because it allows him to kind of keep in touch on one step ahead of what everyone else is doing. So he can kind of hear what the supervillains have got planned, where they're going, what they're doing, and then make sure that he's kind of adapting his behavior around that. It would be a shame to get blood all over my nice new outfit. With all these supervillains plotting against our hero, it's a good idea to know exactly who you're dealing with. Who sent you? You go straight. So the Joker's in there, you would have seen the Joker in there. Um, he's not looking too well at the moment. With Joker, you know, Batman knows never to trust him. As you of all people should do, there's plenty wrong with me. The Riddler's back and he's out for revenge. So 
Uh, what Riddler's been doing is he's actually captured some people, he's holding them hostage. Then they die. What Batman needs to do is to solve these traps that he set up. Heads or tails, kitty cat. Two Face is in the game, and it's great to have him in the game. He was one of kind of the main characters that wasn't in the first game, um, and he's a character we've had great fun with. Fear. That's how we get respect. I think the golden rule with Catwoman is she's always looking out for number one. So with Batman distracted in Arkham City, she's going to be looking to see what she can do, what she can get out of the situation. So what's nice is, is you're going to actually get to play some of that. So you're going to get to take a walk on the wild side. You're going to get to control Catwoman and play Catwoman missions, which are seamlessly interwoven with Batman's story. This is going to hurt. And when you've worked with the Batman as long as these guys, you tend to understand him better than the average citizen of Gotham ever will. Yeah, he goes around and he knocks people out and he, you know, he has this great combat and he's like the world's greatest martial artist. He's combined all these martial arts from around the world. But also deep down at heart, he does have this kind of psychological trauma that he's trying to overcome. You know, if he has a superpower, it's just his level of dedication and commitment to what he believes in. And let's not forget his remote control batarang. This superhero-sized adventure promises even more action, sleuthing, and puzzle-solving than its predecessor. There's a massive city to explore with an epic story that rivals anything Batman's faced before. I'm taking you down, too. The only way to find out who's really in control is to don your Batsuit, tell Alfred to hold all your calls, and go inside the most dangerous place in the history of Gotham, Batman Arkham City.